I have just a few minutes to spend with you before His Excellency the Vice President joins us. I was chatting with one of his aides. He's been watching online and he will join us at, I think, 12 o'clock. So I want to make it snappy before he does. Now, just to create some context, conferences like this, platforms like this, sometimes we are tempted to think that we are here to receive nuggets that we are going to apply strictly so that we succeed. I don't believe that. I believe that conferences like this, summits like this, platforms like this give us three things. They give us perspective. Perspective. So you are in the world living your life, trying to do something with your world. And sometimes what you need is perspective. You need to see things from someone else's point of view. Someone else who's probably achieved it. Someone else who is struggling in the same challenge. Somebody who has even failed in that same space. So that you get a different or a similar point of view. So one of the things that we are getting from this is perspective. Another is inspiration. You're hoping to be inspired by the stories that you're going to hear. And then the other is getting a bigger world view. Seeing things from a broader landscape than what you do. For all of these, in the end, it's up to you to pick that which works for you and that which you think doesn't work for you. I don't want you leaving here thinking that this is how it must be done and if I don't do it this way, I'll fail. You get my point? You get my point? So we are here for perspective, inspiration, and a bigger worldview. And I hope that by the time you go home today, you go home with some new perspectives, you'll be inspired and you have a bigger worldview. In the few minutes that I have the opportunity to be with you, I want to speak to you about a few ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm not here to tell you the story of some very overly successful people who've done something. But I want to tell you the stories of some five very ordinary people who are doing some extraordinary things. And let me put in a caveat by apologizing that the examples I'll give you are examples of all men. Uh, hopefully next time around I'll give you examples of all women. I hope you forgive me for that. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you the stories of five people, ordinary people, people who have two eyes, one nose, one heart, two ears, just like you and I, but who are doing extraordinary things. And what I want to do is that I want to draw a few lessons on why they are able to do extraordinary things, on how they are able to do extraordinary things, and make some suggestions to you that perhaps if you consider some of those things, some of those values, some of those common threats, you could do a few more extraordinary things than what I believe you are doing currently. That's my simple task. Five ordinary people who are doing extraordinary things. I want to start by telling you a story of a gentleman who I'm sure many of you are familiar with by now, or I hope you are familiar with by now. In the year 2000, that's about 19, 20 years ago. 2000 would be about 20 years plus ago. So in the year 2000, this young man I'm going to speak to you about was born right here in the Great Accra region. In the year 2000. He was born to a fishmonger. A woman who, as I'm sure you know, will buy fish and will... Um, treat it and will make it available to the market. A woman by the name of Eunice Smith. She was a fishmonger and a trader at the Mokola market. And his father, by name Godfrey Techi, was a cloth trader. I'm sure you know a few fishmongers and you know a few cloth traders. So this is a young man born in the greater Accra region, in the streets of Accra, to a fishmonger who is also a trader, and to a cloth trader. Nothing extraordinary about that. Many of you probably even have a better start in life than somebody like this. And was schooling right here in the greater Accra region. In fact, I'm told he used to attend a school called Mary's Preparatory School and later went to Bishop Mixed uh, Preparatory School. But by the age of eight, he realized, or those around him, including himself, realized that he had a knack for sports had an interest in sports and therefore they decided to work on honing that sport talent. 
Initially, they tried a few other sports, and then they realized that he was a bit more interested in boxing. And so he took an interest in boxing, and they registered him at a gym. I'm, I'm told the gym is called Disciplined Gym. Why? Because the art of physical workouts and the art of building your body and, you know, the pugilistic uh, sport is one that requires a lot of discipline. It's not a very easy thing to do. And so he particularly attended a gym they call Discipline Gym because it took a lot of hard work combining that with education, etc. Now, in the year 2020, as many of you would recall, the world was hit by a pandemic. And so for many people doing stuff, they had to slow down. But it was the same year in which they said, those who want to go to Olympic Games, this is the year that you have to qualify. And March was a time when the pandemic was really hitting or beginning to hit parts of West Africa and Africa. I recall that it was in March 2020 that we had our first cases of COVID-19 in Ghana. So this an ordinary guy, fishmonger's son, cloth trader's son, born here on the streets of Accra, struggling through the normal basic education that you and I go through, decided to venture into sports, is now trying his hands at boxing, and by 2020, when he thinks he's going to make a break, COVID hits. And in the midst of the pandemic, when many people were slowing down and shutting down, he actually managed to qualify at the African qualifiers for the Olympic Games. If you watched the Olympic Games recently, he was one of the representatives for Ghana, and he won the bronze medal for Ghana in boxing at the Olympic Games. Now, I told you, I'm not going to tell you a story of some guys who are making billions from all over the world. I'm going to tell you stories of ordinary people doing a few extraordinary things. This is a young man who is just in his 19, 20 years, right from Ghana, with all the challenges that you and I have, and he went way to the very top to win a bronze medal for Ghana. Indeed, in the last bout, I'm told all the five judges uh, scored for him, and he ended up winning a bronze medal for Ghana. That's the story of an ordinary guy doing extraordinary things. I'll tell you a few more stories. At my ministry, we've introduced a program we call Amplified. We pick ordinary young Ghanaians who are doing something exciting that we think we should amplify and let the world see. I met a guy called Derek. Derek, a few years older than you, graduated from university, did his national service and said, unlike what we ordinarily do, which is printing a CV and going around looking for jobs, he wants to be his own boss, like in the little documentary that we saw, and start his own business. He didn't have an extraordinary business idea. All he knew how to do was to do something as simple as plantain chips. How many of you know plantain chips? Very, very simple, right? So Derek produces plantain chips and then now started adding a few more things to it. Coconut chips, groundnuts, uh, spiced, etc. And decided to do world-class packaging and putting it in fast-moving consumer good shops and supermarkets. When I found him, Derek is selling about 1,000 packs of his plantain chips a day in the same Republic of Ghana that we are all saying is difficult. That means in a week, even if he works for five days only, he's selling about 5,000 packs. In a month, 20,000 packs. Now, if Derek is making one CD margin per pack, how much is he making at the end of a month? 20,000 Ghana CDs. Derek is an ordinary 24-year-old Ghanaian doing something out of the ordinary. And this morning, as I mentioned to you, I'm not here to tell you stories of billionaires. I'm here to tell you stories of ordinary people doing what? extraordinary things for those of you who are familiar with skits on social media and you follow social media skits the next person i'm about to show you is somebody i'm sure you've probably watched a skit before how many of you have seen a skit before freaky freaky you're doing well you watch it let me tell you his story his name is debo adebayo 28 years of age. And if my research is right, 
he is not the first or second or third born of his parents. He is the tenth born of his parents living in Lagos. How many of you have been to Lagos before? Lagos is a very crowded, difficult place to survive. Even if you are the only child of wealthy parents in Lagos, it's a difficult enterprise. He's not number one, not number two, not number three, not number four. He's number ten. Living in Lagos. Actually, his story is that twice he did not succeed with his attempt to enter university or to get a university degree. The first two times. It was, I think, the third time that he made some progress. Mr. Deboye today is worth over three hundred thousand dollars mostly through skits he does on social media including youtube and other channels the estimate is that he has over a million people following him on social media platforms and he monetizes that and today he's estimated at having a net worth of about three hundred thousand dollars ordinary guy in a difficult place like lagos doing extraordinary things and in a moment i'll draw some common threads it's not an exhaustive list but a few things i notice about these people which i want to share with you that maybe just maybe if you paid attention to some of these things you and i could also end up doing a few more extraordinary things than we are doing now the next person i'm about to show you i'm sure some of you may know some may not know Oh, you know him already, eh? <laughs> Pastor Brian, I'll be surprised if you know him. <laughs> but this gentleman, 19 years of age, Mohammed Ismail Sheriff, born in Konongo Zongo, in the Republic of Ghana. And he's from Konongusongo to the world. True or false? In fact, now when you look on social media platforms, he's clocking over 3 million views for some of his productions. And it is believed he's beginning to make some good money. He's not the only guy from Konongusongo. He's not the only guy who has attempted to break through through music. But there's something that some of these young men and women, not older than you or I, there's something that they are doing that is making these ordinary people end up doing extraordinary things. And so the few minutes I have with you here today, I want to highlight some of those things and suggest to you that maybe if we pay attention to some of those characteristics, we could do a lot more than we are doing. This guy is making a killing out of a unique storytelling approach telling the story of young people and the struggles that they are going through and how they are trying to to make it and maybe i should add one last guy This guy here is the grandson of a palm wine tapa. My grandfather, after whom I was named, actually was a palm wine tapa. And my father, who most likely would have succeeded him in the palm wine tapping business, moved into formal work simply because he got an education. Else, by now, I'll probably be inheriting my father as the chief executive of the palm wine tapping business. Ordinarily, that may be my path. But today, I have the opportunity to be with a few thousands of you speaking to you as a minister of state and as a member of parliament. Ordinary guy, trying to do a few extraordinary things. A few weeks ago, we opened up what for me warms my heart, a new surgical unit in a medical center in my constituency. Uh, from independence till now in my constituency, we've never had a medical doctor or a surgical unit. It's something that I would like to believe, even though I say so myself. It's something that I would like to believe is something extraordinary that we are doing in our constituency. So let me cut to the chase. 
what is it about all of these people that I'm telling you about? Ordinary people. That is enabling them to do a few extraordinary things. One of the first things you notice in the stories of the various people I'm telling you is that they're ordinary people. I mean, Cheddar will tell you a story later. But these are ordinary people. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you notice as you follow their stories is that somewhere at an early stage, they developed a vision of what they want to achieve or the space that they want to be in. For many of us, we run through this race of life, especially at this stage, without clarity of what we want to achieve or the space within which we want to play. And many of us are looking for some highfalutin, big, million-dollar idea before we move. But for many of the stories I've told you today, these are very ordinary people who started off right from the beginning with the desire to do something small, clarity about something small they wanted to do in the space in which they find themselves. So I want to suggest to you that as ordinary as you are, one of the very first things you need to do is to begin to formulate and have some clarity on the value that you want to create for society, what you want to do for the broader society what you want to, the space in which you want to operate that thing that you want to give off to the broader society as value because for all the stories i've told you it starts with that little sparking idea of this is the little thing i want to do for the broader society and for the many of us young people who are going through the system who have not settled on what it is we want to start off with i want to suggest to you that now is a good time to begin thinking through that little thing that you want to do to add value to for many of them, they just started with a little around them and kept pushing. A good number of us are waiting for a big break, waiting for something significant, waiting for somebody to invest something big in us before we move. But the stories of the young men that I've been sharing with you today are stories of people who started off perhaps just with a mobile phone creating content who started off just with their mother's kitchen doing planting. This is not a, um, 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 a U.S. example. This is right here in or behind Dan Suman there about where I found this young man. They started off with something small, just the little around them and kept pushing. And so the next point I want to make to all of us who are here is that we have to start by figuring out or picking out that little thing that we want to do. It doesn't need to be something... Uh, extraordinary in itself it doesn't need to be something that blows the mind away but what we have to do is to start with the little that we have and just keep on pushing because that's how the story of the people who do extraordinary things that's how they do it for many of them they didn't join what seemed to be the popular track at the time they were starting they stuck with what they realized they were simply good at and kept building on it for many of us young people, we've been gifted with something. But often we are looking to throw it away and try and grasp onto something bigger. The stories of the ordinary people doing extraordinary things that I'm sharing with you are stories of people who just stuck with what they were good at and kept being true to themselves. I'm sure if Black Sheriff decided that he wanted to rap like Sarko Deer or change to be somebody else, he probably won't be where he is today, true or false. But he stuck to who he is and stayed true to himself and has been hitting it over and over again and today you are beginning to recognize him that's how ordinary people end up doing extraordinary things for many of them indeed for all of them they did not allow the naysayers the people who specialize in you can't do it the people who specialize in we doubt that this will work out the people who specialize in opinion trolling of everything you are doing and bringing it down and making the point that this is either not real or it can't happen or it can't be successful, it's not possible. Because you can elect to listen and pay attention to them and kill your spirit and your strength. But for many of these people, you interrogate their stories and they are people who chose not to listen to the naysayers or the doubters or the opinion trolls or the mockers. They decided instead to join hands with vision helpers. You need people around you who will believe in your dream and will help you in that vision, as little as it may be, as ordinary as it may be. 
And the two final things that I think I would like to share with you from the stories of these people is that they kept the focus. This is what I want to achieve, and I'm going to keep at it until I get there. They kept the focus. They kept trying to improve each day, doing tomorrow better than today, no matter today's challenges or difficulties. And in the end, we are beginning to see stories of extraordinary success out of these ordinary people. My submission to you this morning, as I wrap up, is that you are most likely an ordinary person, like all these people who we now look up to. And I guess it's a good place to start off as an ordinary person. And if you are here today, you are probably hungry for your own example of the extraordinary. You are here today because you want to get some perspectives and to be inspired and to have a bigger worldview so that you can also do something extraordinary. I want to simply suggest to you, it's no rocket science. It's no exceptional idea. It's just about looking within and asking yourself what you can make, what I can make into something extraordinary. Some of the biggest company in, companies in the world, they do simple things like they sell bread. McDonald's and all of these people, they sell bread or they sell chicken. But it's simply because they have had clarity in answering that question, what can I make into the extraordinary? So for you who are here today, my submission to you is simple. Look within. There's something that you can create. There's some value that you can add to the Ghanaian or to the community ecosystem in which you operate. What you need to do is look within and ask yourself, what can I make into that extraordinary? And start. And forget about the naysayers and the doubters. And carry on your difficulties. But just keep going and making tomorrow better than it was today. Trying to improve day after day. And in the end, maybe next year when I come back, I'll tell your story as one of the ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I thank the opportunity to wish to be with you. I wish you all the best and I look forward to seeing you do extraordinary stuff in the near future. Thank you.